like, share, subscribe. Hey y'all, welcome back. Number 20, 24 says, what are all the real values for x, for which, and then we have this equation that we need to solve. So let's go ahead and retype this equation. The first thing we want to do is try to make that right-hand side just a single fraction. So in order to do that, we'll, we'll need to find a common denominator. To find a common denominator, especially when you're not sure what the denominator is, like in this case we have x, we need to multiply each fraction by a special form of 1 where both the numerator and the denominator are the same as the other de denominator. What I mean by that is, like, we want to multiply this fraction by x over x, and we want to multiply this fraction by 3 over 3. So that way, the denominators are going to be 3x for both of them, and then they'll have a common denominator. So you basically just look at the other denominator that you want, and then multiply by a form of 1 where that is both the numerator and the denominator. I wonder if I can make this a different... Nope, it's got to be all, all or nothing there. Oh, oh okay. Oh, boy. <laughs> all right, let's, uh, let's recenter ourselves here. Okay, so we've got it all back up here. Now, once we have it set up like this, we can go ahead and multiply those together so that we get that common denominator. 1 times x is just going to be x, and 3 times x is going to be 3x. Over here, 3 times 1 is 3, and 3 times x is going to be 3x. So now we've got a common denominator, so we can combine those two fractions. So we'll end up with x minus 3 over 3x. Now what we can do is we can use the cross products property to solve for x. Sometimes it's called cross multiplication, but basically what, it's, what it means is if you have a situation where you have a proportion, so you have a proportional relationship, we'll say like a over b equals c over d, then the cross products property says that we can rewrite this as a times d equals c times b. Okay, in other words, we can multiply a times d and c times b and set those two products equal to each other. So that's what we're going to do here. Um, we're going to multiply 2 times 3x, which would be 6x, and we're going to multiply, uh, well here, I'll just, I'll, I'll, I'll write it out separately. 2 times 3x, and then on the right-hand side, we'll have 3 minus x, times x minus 3. So I do need to multiply all this out and simplify. So um, here we have 6x on this side. On the right-hand side, I do need to FOIL or use the distributive property to mul multiply those binomials. So I'm going to have 3 times x. I'm going to have negative x times x. 3 times uh, negative 3, and negative x times negative 3. I kind of changed which ones I wanted to be matched up there. So let's multiply these one at a time, and then we'll combine our like terms. So 3 times x is going to be 3x, and we have 3 times negative 3 will be negative 9. The negative x times x will be minus x squared. And then we have negative 3 times negative x, which will be plus 3x. So all told here, We've got 3x plus 3x, which is going to be 6x. And then we've got these other terms. So what I want to do, since I, it looks like I'm, I have a quadratic here, is I want to try to move everything to the left-hand side so that my equation is equal to 0. You always want to set your equation, your quadratic equation is equal to 0 so that you can either use the quadratic formula or factoring. So I'm going to add x squared to both sides here. So this x squared, if I add to both sides, is going to pop up over here. And then, oops, and then I'm going to add 9 to both sides. Okay, so that plus 9 is going to go over here. And then I'm going to subtract 6x from both sides. So do that. And actually what happens here is both these 6x's are going to cancel each other out. 
And so I'm left with x squared plus 9 equals 0. So I really don't need to factor this or use quadratic formula. Instead, I'm just going to subtract 9 and then take the square root of both sides. So I'm going to subtract 9 from both sides to give me x squared equals negative 9. Now, when I take the square root of both sides, I always have to do plus or minus. Um, that's just something you always have to do and anytime you square root both sides of an equation. So plus or minus the square root of negative 9. Now, since 9 is negative, uh, when you take the square root, that's going to result in a complex number with an imaginary number. If you want to simplify that completely, the square root of 9 is 3. And the square root of negative 1, sometimes we write that as i. So one way how you could uh, see this written is like plus or minus 3i. Now, these are not real solutions. They are what we call imaginary or complex. And so that is going to be our answer here, is we actually get no real solutions. The only solutions we get are going to be these imaginary solutions. So that's it for 24. Thanks for watching, and I hope you all have a great day.